This video will demonstrate how to put on a power chain to do an active orthodontic movement in this dog. It's important to note that orthodontics are only used to alleviate traumatic bites, traumatic occlusions, not for cosmetic purposes. This case was a six month old Irish Terrier with a class one malocclusion where 404 is lingoverted. So you can see that it's making a tiny hole up into the gum area between 103 and 104. The diastema between 103 and 4 is not wide enough. So in order to fix that, we can pull 104 back a little bit. It's important to always take x-rays before you start to make sure that the teeth are not malformed in any way. The first thing you do when doing these corrections is that you clean and polish the surface. If you see some calculus, make sure that you clean that off with the ultrasonic scaler. It's best to use a fluoride-free pumice so you don't interfere with the bonding process. I'm inserting a suction device here. It's always nice to have suction for these because you're spraying with a lot of water and you want to do as much as you can to avoid any aspiration. And also when you see in a little bit, I will flush the acid etch away. That will certainly um, help reduce any damage from acid um, touching the gums or gingiva. So give it a nice polish. And I'm including three teeth in this correction. It's important that the base will be stronger than the tooth you are trying to move, the anchor. Because if you put an um, elastic band between two teeth, trying to, they will move together. So the, the, um, the weakest tooth, so to speak, with the weakest anchor, will be the tooth that is moving. So you may have a situation, if the anchor is not strong enough, that it's the molar that you are moving <laughs> instead of the canine tooth. You don't want that. So here I'm applying 37% phosphoric acid on the enamel. This needs to stay there for about 20 seconds. What it does, it creates almost like a Velcro surface with lots of small spikes that will make the surface um, more adherent to the bonding that we're going to put on before. So it's just a preparation to make sure that our buttons will stick to the tooth and not just fall off. If you etch for 20 seconds, you should flush for about 20 seconds too, to avoid any sensitivity issues with remnants of the acid migrating into the tooth and the tubules. So let's start with these two teeth. And now we're gonna see, dry the surface on the caudal one too. You always may wanna make sure that the surface is completely dry because when you're doing your bonding and acid etching it needs to be dry in order to work so apply the phosphoric acid here let it stay for about 20 seconds and when you dry the tooth after you will see that the area that was acid etched has a kind of a frosted appearance. So I'm um, flushing again for 20 seconds. Okay, and just a light drying with my air syringe. Now I'm applying a bonding material. This is called Futura Bond M Plus. You can get them in um, like single use packages but you can also get a bottle like this I would recommend the bottle because it lasts much longer you get at least 100 treatments from that so you gently rub it in and you'll see the hair moving now that's because I'm air drying with my three way air water syringe just to evaporate any solvents and just to make the layer a little bit thinner because 
you want the, the bonding layer to be as thin as possible. Now I'm light curing, so I'm using just a standard light curing gun. Mine is about, I think, 1600 watts. That means that it takes around 20 seconds for this bonding material to cure. So the weaker your light curing gun is, the longer you have to cure. Some of the human ones, they cure in two or three seconds, but they also will cost you more than a thousand euro. This one is uh, a lot cheaper, a couple hundred euro. And you know, for us veterinarians, it's okay that we wait 20 seconds uh, because we're not doing restorations all day, every day. So we can wait a little longer. So once you're done light curing it, now you're ready to apply the buttons. I like to use these lingual buttons that have some holes in them because it will catch on to the to the composite much easier. This is the flowable composite that I'm applying. And so you just place the button on a smooth surface. It has to be an even surface. Find a spot like here when where there's no curvature. You don't want to have the button sit on like the a peak of the mountain, so to speak. You you want the the layer, the base to be even. So all of the button is touching the tooth. So I'm just releasing the forceps and just light curing a little bit more. When I started doing this, I was always afraid that these just a single button wouldn't stay on the tooth that it was going to come off. But I think my worries uh, is not reasonable because this lasts really well, especially if you use these buttons with holes, they will stay on the tooth. So you don't need an excessive amount of composite material to make them stay. This is called Grand ISO Heavy Flow. It's a human product. It's very nice, it has a nice color to it when you're doing restorations in general. So put it on this spot. I'm just I'm just touching the button with my light here just to kind of press it towards the tooth a little bit and then I release with my forceps and I um, I cure it a little bit longer. Be aware that these curing guns can produce quite a lot of heat so you want to you want to keep a little distance to the tooth but not too far away because it can actually heat up the tooth causing um, pulpitis and pulp issues. So you don't want that. So make sure that you you know kind of how hot it gets. So the last button is placed right here on the lateral aspect of that tooth. The further towards the crown tip you place the button, the easier it will tip and the less force you will need. If you place it near the middle between the crown and root, it will tend to induce a translation where the crown and apex both travel in a bodily movement, so the whole tooth moves distally. So it all depends on what kind of movement you are aiming for. If I were to do a little critique of myself here post-op, I would have placed the button a little lower the next time, but it still worked nicely for this dog. So I just noticed right here on the first button that there was a little composite sticking up so we couldn't put the elastic chain on. So I'm using just my small little root tip burr just to drill that away. All right, so now we're ready to apply the power chain. So it's a flexible like plastic band and they come in all shapes and sizes. I recommend you to get the one with the most amount of holes where the spaces between the holes are the smallest because that will make it easier for you to to um, adjust it uh, correctly in small breeds. So you want to place it quite tightly between these two teeth. So by tightening the elastic band quite a lot here, you will push the teeth together and together they will serve as a f uh, powerful anchor so that it's the canine tooth that moves and not 108 or 109. 
One way to avoid moving the wrong teeth is looking at the tooth root surfaces. So this illustration or this uh, text is from Wix Veterinary Dentistry. And you see that the canine tooth root surface is 3.4 and the fourth premolar is 2.5. So if you only secured it to, two and a half, to the fourth premolar, it will be the fourth premolar moving rustily, not the canine moving back. That's why we include the first molar which brings the surface up to four, which is greater than the canine. So how tight should this elastic band be? Well, if you stretch the elastic band fully, that is considered the chain's maximum elastic force. We want to use about 20% of that for this movement. On average, that will equal to about 50 grams of force for a dog required to tip a tooth. More than twice the force is generally needed to rotate or move the whole body of the tooth. The most precise way is to use a force gauge or dynamometer to measure the exact force. But if you don't have one of those in clinic, you can use this trick instead. So without stretching the elastic band, you place it over the buttons and count how many free holes are there between each button. So in this case, there were 17 free holes. We want to stretch the elastic band 20% more. So that means that you say 17 times 0.8, what is that? That's 13.6. So there needs to be 13 or 14 holes between the buttons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm going to grab it at the 14. I'm going to pull it into that. So there will be 13 free holes between. So we went from... 17 to 13 holes because what you want to do is you want to induce a physiologic movement where the, there's resorption on the pressure side so you, when you are pushing the tooth or pulling a tooth the periodontal ligaments will stretch or be compressed so the side where they are compressed there will be a resorption of the bone so on the side where they are stretched there will be a deposition of new bone but if you are stretching or compressing too hard so the force is bigger than the capillary blood pressure into the in the periodontal ligaments you will have necrosis and this is very bad it is extremely important to note that more force is not better so don't stretch the elastic band too hard if you do that you will get a pathological movement of the tooth which means that it moves because of necrosis and there will not be adequate uh, bone deposition on the correct side so that doesn't work so what i'm doing here is i'm using a gingivectomy bird just to do an auto incline plane so it just means that you are doing a little gingivoplasty to make space for the tip of 404 so it no longer catches in a hole but you make kind of a slope so you you are forcing it to <laughs> tip outwards i'm crossing my fingers because i hope this will work but you saw in the beginning that we had a nice result after um, seven days so you want the active treatment to last about one to two weeks, up to four weeks, followed by a couple of weeks of retention. So in this case, I'm changing that elastic band every seven days because the elastic band loses its uh, flexibility. So every seven days, you want to change the elastic band. And then when the tooth is in the correct position, you want to have a period of time of retention and that can be, in this case, I would leave the elastic band on for two more weeks. So because this is a young dog, the tooth has, uh, it's going to move quite fast. So the active treatment phase where we're moving the tooth will last around two weeks. So one change of elastic band after seven days in sedation. Or if it's a very <laughs> calm dog like this one, I was actually able to change it while the dog was awake. After orthodontic correction, the tooth that has been moved oftentimes want to move back into its original position. However, with this particular 
type of orthodontic correction, the bite is self-stabilizing. That means that you don't need a retainer because once the lower canine is positioned correctly between the upper canine and the upper third incisors, it will stabilize itself. They won't move anywhere. So thank you so much for getting this course. I hope it will help your career. I hope it will help you help a lot of patients with malocclusions. This was the type of course I wish I had when I had to do it the first time. I didn't, but um, now you have it and I wish you great success.